Rich is in Arizona. Yeah, well, thanks for taking my call, although I'm sure you're not going to like it, because the fact of the matter is you're just a front runner, buddy. They I'm a won the front Super runner. Bowl, so now so now you're all over Tom Brady and Belichick well, as uh, listen, they're these listen, great Rich. emperors. Rich. Now that they won the Super Bowl. Except I've said this win? did Cleveland wait, why why don't you let somebody talk? Well, Are you how about, how about you, I, Well, because you're 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 wrong. Are I've been sitting this and saying Are you a coward too? If I was a coward, listen, listen if I was a coward, I would have hung up on you, you already. Are. Well, you would let me talk if you weren't. But idiot. I've said this before the Super Bowl. Who cares, buddy? Who cares oh, buddy, good, buddy. You tell me, buddy. A, you are a front runner. I'm a front you're runner. You're a front runner. Why? That's what you are. Yeah. Now let me make my point, you coward. I'm a coward, but yet okay. I'm letting you make your point. Go uh, ahead. Cleveland did Cleveland win the AFC Championship with deflated footballs? No. The Patriots did. The Atlanta Falcons were in the NFC title game two years ago. Were they pumping crowd noise in back then? Maybe. So what? They're not in it this year. The Patriots are. That's why okay. we're talking about but them, the, but, but the logic is that they've been deflating footballs for how long, right? Well, what's the logic behind the Atlanta Falcons that nobody cares? They were in the NFC title game. And I'm the idiot? I mean, seriously? <laughs> Dude, you're off your rocker. You're probably retired somewhere in Arizona. I get it. Enjoy the spa and the cactus and the nice weather. And that's it. Put some of those hot stones on your back when you're getting the massage. It's all good. But seriously, like what? I'm a front runner? I don't even like the Patriots. I grew up a Dolphins fan. No one has been more miserable about their football experience than I have for the last 17, 18 years since Dan Marino retired. But I'm the idiot. I'm the coward. I'm a front runner. Get out of here with that nonsense. You don't know me. Are you what kind of a moron? Are you? Good lord. Go live off your IRA in uh, Arizona. Jeez. Cranky guy. Ah. Ah. You're a coward. You're an idiot. <laughs> no, you can't get past your own biases. That's the deal. I can at least admit it. We hate the Patriots because they win. We hate teams that win. Whether they cheat or not, they all cheat. Where are you at, Cal Turd? Oh. He'll be back Monday, Phyllis. How dare you? All right, we'll take more of your calls. Teddy Bruschi is supposed to stop in, too, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. We'll talk to him in a little bit. Sedano and for Collins, the Herd on ESPN Radio. In sports radio, here's how it works. In Los Angeles, when the teams stink, sports radio ratings go into the tank. Nobody cares. They disengage. In New York, teams stink. Ratings go up. People are angry. They call. They complain. I don't know why. Pete Carroll is lucky he coaches in Seattle. Pete Carroll got run out of New England, run out of New York. If he was coaching a New York team, a Philadelphia team, a Boston team with that play call, he would get destroyed for six months. Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, would be fired. It would be outrageous in Seattle. They're like, that hurt. Ten years from now, my tummy's still going to ache. They're like, ah, oh, that leaves, that kind of burns in my soul. Nothing against Pete Carroll, but he has been on a luxury ride for a couple of years. He left USC, program was a mess, went to Seattle. They had like three, four quarterbacks, wasn't working. He got Russell Wilson, now he doesn't lose much. And I, I got to tell you, Tom, uh, uh, Pete Carroll, he's lucky he lost, quote, out there, out in the mountains on the coast. Uh, because you watched that game last night, Wow. Wow, New England is spectacularly coached. Wow. Uh, TJ, you're in the herd, buddy. Fire away. Hey, Colin. Here's the thing. I'm looking at my wife right now. 
I got a bowl full of hummus and a cocktail in my hand. My buddies <laughs> came over for recruiting. All right. And she's looking at me like, this could be the end of this. I'm wondering if this was the part of your first marriage where it went wrong or something else. <laughs> oh, God, there was a lot of pro. No. Um, you know, I try, I'm really good at departmentalizing things, TJ. So there is wife time and there is romance time and there is, hey, what about that defensive back from Canton, Ohio? So I, de- <laughs> I compartmentalize and my wife gives me like, here, you get an hour, get it, do this. Today, buddy, is your day, TJ. Tell your wife you love her. But she has to understand that a man, TJ, has needs and you need to know about that defensive back from Modesto, California. And today, buddy, is your day. I need to know where I'm in Marshall's going. The Sark tank. I need to know. <laughs> My staff is rolling their eyes. Only you and I, TJ. He'll be a Trojan, buddy. Don't worry about it. Well, I would worry about it. Nobody's quite sure. He may go to Florida State. The Herd on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. <laughs> The Herd here on ESPN Radio. George Zidano in for Colin today. Front-running coward. That's what I am. Teddy Bruschi will join us in a few minutes. Rich in Arizona may not want to hear that. That's for sure. Can we get Rich in Arizona again? Can we play that back? Do we have, like, enough of that? I think that was the funniest call ever. You front-runner. Sorry, just using logic. Go ahead. You're just a front-runner, buddy. They I'm won a the front Super runner. Bowl, so now, so now you're all over Tom Brady and Belichick. Well, as uh, listen, they're these listen, great Rich, emperors. Rich. Now that they won the Super Bowl, except did I've Cleveland said this. Win? Did Cleveland wait? Why? Why don't you let somebody talk? Well, Are you how about? How about? You, I, well, because you're 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 wrong. Are I've been sitting coward? this and Are saying. Are you a coward too? If I was a coward, co- listen. A if I was a coward, I would have hung up on you. You already. are. Except I let him make his point. And I always no. let me make, make, let people make their points. I love that. That to me is fun. Even though Rich is kind of off his rocker, but you're just a front runner, buddy. I am. I am a front runner and a coward, coward. Apparently, why am I a coward though? I don't get that. Well, because I wasn't going to let are him a talk. Front runner. I let him talk. I am a front runner. No. We got a new Phyllis here. Basically, that's what this. No. First, we thought he was saying you're like cow herd. Right. Right. No, he definitely didn't mean that. Why don't you let somebody talk? I think we let him talk too much. I think he hurt everybody's ears. No. Mike is in Arizona as well. Mike, what would you say? Hey, for yeah, how you your buddy today? Just wanted to call and apologize for that idiot from Arizona. Uh, we all don't feel like that. Uh, and that's how we end up with Republican governors and people on the street who can't drive. My God, is that guy deluded. Listen, man, um, I, I think the the old guy just had a, you know, he's, he's, he's upset. And he had, uh, you know, he had a hot take. And uh, he really didn't have anything to say, though. Like that was the other thing. Like, and thank you for the call. He had he, plenty to say. You're a front runner and a coward, right? Like, what was his point? So when I brought up that you're a front runner, buddy. You're a front runner. When, <laughs> when I brought up the Falcons, it was like, oh, well, that's not this year. Well, what was no. the Falcons haven't been doing that for years? Nobody cares about the Falcons pumping in crowd noise. You're but, just a front runner, but buddy. We made two weeks of shows worth about deflated footballs. The dumbest story ever. You coward. Teddy Bruschi's in here. He's laughing already. <laughs> He's laughing oh, already. Ca- yeah. Are we on air right now? We are on air right now. <laughs> you got an earpiece in? I want him to hear uh, this. I want him to hear. I want him to hear Rich in Arizona. Plug him in. What's wrong with Rich in Arizona? He's mad at me because I just said that we just need to come clean. And admit that we hated the Patriots, no. and it was personal. And Rich, you, you don't like the Patriots? No. All right, what what you got for me, man? You're just a front runner, buddy. <laughs> they I'm won a the front Super runner. Bowl, so now, so now you're all over Tom Brady and Belichick. Well, as uh, listen, they're these listen, great Rich, emperors. Rich. Now that they won the Super Bowl. Except I've Cleveland said this. Win? Did Cleveland Wait, why why don't you let somebody talk? Well, Are you how about, how about you, uh, well, because you're 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 wrong. Are I've you been a sitting coward? this and saying, Are you a coward too? If I was a coward, co- listen. A if I was a coward, I would have hung up on you, you already. Are. That was my exchange with uh, oh, Rich. Okay, I, I'm wrong, and I'm a coward, and I'm a front runner because I said that we we made this story uh, before sure. the, when Deflategate first came out. Uh, I was actually in for Colin, who was sick, 
And I said, this is the dumbest story I've ever come across. And we're, this is going to become really huge and it's silly. And so I've just kind of made my point today by we've got a Brown scandal with Texgate and the Atlanta Falcons scandal, allegedly amusing finger quotes with the crowd p- pumping crowd noise in. Has Nobody been, cares. Has that been given a gate uh, name? Crowd gate. Like that? Maybe noise gate. Speaker gate. So that's kind of my like thing. That. Like, it's yeah. just like it kind of proves my point from a couple of weeks ago when I was in for Colin that this is such a silly story and it's all personal. It's just you don't like New England because they win. Well, it's. You know, it's a lot of a lot of criticism they took in the last couple of weeks. I agree with that. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm glad that you guys told me that was a recording too, because I thought he was calling me a front runner. You were ready to no. Go like, at it with what am I? I'm a front runner now. <laughs> I, You're like I won some Super Bowls. I just I just you walked are in the front runner. <laughs> <laughs> I just walked in the studio. Um, sure. I mean, if you want, I mean, I think Tom and Bill and Mr. Kraft. I mean, they they did what they had to do to try to simmer down everybody and, and try to be as transparent as they possibly could be in terms of because it was the Patriots, because it was, I mean, this is a very highly successful team. And of course it's going to get more attention than, you know, the Browns or the Falcons or something like that. But uh, that's, that's gotta be my only explanation there. Do you got time to stick around? Sure. Because yeah, sure. We're, we're up against a break. The suits are going to get mad at me because I went along with rich. Okay. So uh, fighting with rich went long. So I, I want to get a full segment in with you. All right. All right, Teddy Bruschi, we'll, we'll talk some actual football. How about that? No. <laughs> Come on, Rich. I want to talk actual football. You coward. Come on, Rich. Stop. No. I'm done with you. All right, we'll talk more with Teddy for, in a second. But first, with bad weather, roads closing, and people homesick, holding a meeting can be a logistical nightmare. But you still need to get work done with your teams because, you know, deadlines, they don't wait. I've got the solution. Use Citrix Go to Meeting to meet with clients and coworkers online from anywhere because you need to meet, collaborate, and get work done, even if your team is stuck at home or snowed in. Citrix Go to Meeting helps you work smarter because anyone can join from a computer, tablet, or smartphone. You can turn your webcam on and, and read the room right there with HD video conferencing, share screens to demo new products, et cetera, et cetera, because using Go to Meeting is as simple as clicking a link, and it's just that easy. And if you want to try to sign up, go to gotomeeting.com today. Try it free for 30 days. Nothing to lose, folks. Go to gotomeeting.com. Go to meeting.com and click the try it free button. Do it now, and you can have your first meeting up and running in minutes. That's gotomeeting.com for your free 30-day trial. All right. We'll talk about what the offseason brings for these NFL teams with Teddy Bruschi next. It's the herd. George Sedano in for Colin on ESPN Radio. You're just a front runner, buddy. <laughs> All guests on the herd appear via the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. The herd here on ESPN Radio, presented by Progressive Insurance. All guests appear via the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. George Sedano in for Colin. Teddy Bruschi here to give us his Subway Fresh Take. Rich stole his time in the last second. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> he had his opinion. <laughs> hey, I think an underreported story about New England, and now as the offseason approaches, or we're in the offseason, is what happens next with Revis? What do you do? He's been kind of a mercenary at times, um, but now he's won a ring. What do you do there? Because I think he's really important to their defense. Well, I think the, the, the decision is all Darrell's, really, I think, because the New England Patriots are going to do everything they can to put their best foot forward. I mean, I don't have to go into X's and O's and what he does for Matt Patricia, the defensive coordinator for New England, how... You know, you put him on one or two. It's so many different combinations you can use with your linebackers and your safeties because of what Darrell can do on a certain certain receiver of choice. Uh, but I think winning a championship can be a good thing or a bad thing, the way that Darrell views it. I mean, it can be a good thing, but depending on, depending on which side you're on, okay? I mean, here's just a, the, the couple cool schools of thought is that uh, I've got my championship, now I move on and try to get and maximize my value. That's one. Or it's, I've got my championship, and man, it feels good, and I want another one. And so I'm going to stay and take a little bit less than I would out, out there. But I really do think it, it's going to cost the Patriots if, if they decide to keep uh, Revis, and that's a decision that uh, you know they'll have to make. Obviously, Seattle, on the flip side, they're going to have to pay Russell Wilson, and it reports are that they're willing to pay Marshawn Lynch, at least on a short-term deal, and make him the highest-paid running back or in that in that close to that category. Um, what do you do with Russell Wilson, though, as far as the salary is concerned? Like, oh. do, 
Do you give him yeah. one of those Kaepernick deals where you just kind of go as you, uh, you know, every couple of years, like you kind of revisit it? Or do you just get say, look, whatever Andrew Luck gets, you got to give him because he's already won a Super Bowl. And this is so early in his career. He's never maximized anything. Right. You know, him being on the pay grade that he's been his entire career. I think that everyone wouldn't blame Russell if he's like, I'd like to be in the neighborhood of the highest paid quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something to where Tom Brady doesn't even, he isn't even in the neighborhood in terms of highest paid players in the NFL. In terms of yearly salary, I'm right. talking about things like that. But uh, it's a different situation. You know, when you have three, now four rings in your back pocket and you're, you know, your 14, 15, 16 seasons, you know, you start thinking bigger picture more. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Russell Wilson's a very mature individual. I mean, maybe he's starting to be, think big picture right now and realize if he made somewhat of a sacrifice for his teammates, maybe they'd use it, they'd use it to make the team better. But I got to, I got to tell you how, how important Marshawn Lynch is for this team oh, yeah. because, you know, you, you get a good offense. The whole thing is, you know, you get a good offensive line and then, you know, you can put anybody back there. Look at DeMarco Murray, who's a good running back also, but that offensive line is so good. But you don't understand with Marshawn Lynch in this offensive line, there were so many times that Marshawn Lynch is breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage as those offensive linemen go to the next level. And then that's when they get their blocks and then you see the explosive plays. So not every back can do that. Because I know Coach Belichick would always say, I mean, running backs, I mean, anyone can get to the hole. I mean, it's what you do once you get there. You're always going to have to break a tackle in this league. And if you can't do that, that's going to be a problem. And Marshawn Lynch, in terms of yards after contact, he's the the best in the league. So that's where they have to look at because the offensive line isn't isn't in the neighborhood of Dallas, if you ask me. I mean, this is one where you need a back that's going to have to defeat people in terms of breaking tackles. You mentioned Dallas. How important is it for them to re-sign DeMarco Murray? I mean, the offer, the reported offer was like four for 16 or something like that. Uh, Do you think that they can replace that production? Because it is the most interchangeable position in the sport. Well, I think number one, I mean, Des Bryant also. I think number one should be Des Bryant. I'll give you a quick little example. On that slant pass in the Super Bowl, that little rub route, if that's Des Bryant running that route, do you think he gets through and catches that ball? Yeah. So, I mean, that's where it is. I mean, those type of receivers – you know, those are the guys you want to keep on your team and your offensive line. Brian also, I think number one should be Des Bryant. I'll give sure. you a quick little example. On that slant pass in the Super Bowl, that little rub route, if that's Des Bryant running that route, do you think he gets through and catches that ball? Yeah. So, I mean, that's where it is. I mean, those type of receivers, um, you know, those are the guys you want to keep on your team and your offensive line. In Dallas, you already have, I feel, the best offensive line in the NFL. So, if you degrade, if you downgrade a little bit at the running back position and keep Des Bryant, I mean, I, that, obviously, they're, I think that's the way they're looking to. Who's the team that can challenge Seattle and New England? Who's the team, you, if you could pick one right now, I know obviously we got to go through a draft and an offseason, but who do you think is the closest to challenging them? In their I, think it's, I think it's Baltimore, yeah. and I don't think I have to really uh, think about it a lot. I mean, Baltimore is a team that they've got a couple young players along the offensive and defensive line. Brandon Williams, a defensive line there. They've got some young players coming up too. Mosley had a great had a great season. So, I mean, those they, they shore up that secondary back there. Flacco, I mean, if he doesn't wait till January, they call him, you know, I heard Terrell Suggs calling him January Joe. I'd rather <laughs> right. call him a you know, regular season Joe. You right. know, something like that the entire time. But I think Baltimore is a really serious contender next year. Teddy Bruschi, ESPN NFL analyst. Thanks for sticking around through uh, Rich in the commercial. Yeah, that was funny to watch. Funny to hear, (laughs) fellas. That's all right. Thanks. No problem. Teddy Bruschi with us here, giving us his Subway fresh take. All right, time for two for the road. Well, it's one for the money, two for the road. Two for the road in the herd. All right, I got a couple here. I know the guys here on this show are kind of Game of Thrones geeks, right? Is it just you, John, or Stanzik too? Stanzik also. I'm a huge one, though. Game of Thrones, there's going to be a themed restaurant opened in London. So are you guys, like, booking your trip already? Is that how that's going to work? See, this is John Wood. I wouldn't. You don't care. Yeah. I mean, I watch. The, I caught up. You just want to go to the Garden and watch the Knicks. Yeah. When the they're, whenever they're night. good again. See, John, you'd actually go to London to this theme restaurant? Absolutely. I've got uh, two words for you. Medieval times. You've already been to that restaurant. You know what I mean? Like, that's you've already been to this restaurant. The only difference is it's actually themed around the show. That's it. But you've been to Medieval Times. You've been to this restaurant before. That's the deal. Uh, next story is there's a, uh, a, Steve's Jobs, a Steve Jobs movie, the uh, Apple founder or whatever. Uh, haven't we done this already? 
Haven't we done the Steve Jobs? How many Steve Jobs movies are there? Aren't there a couple? We had the one with Kutcher, right? I didn't think Kutcher was very good. I don't know if that was the right. Did cast. you see it? Or you just, I caught, it didn't look right. I caught a few minutes and I was like, Neh. I'm out. I, listen, if you can, if, I don't know about the movie. If I'm on the fence about it, if you don't capture me in the first half hour, I'm out. I've been out earlier. There was a movie with Tom Cruise. You walk out of movie theaters or like on TV? No, on TV. Yeah. I, I've only walked out of one uh, movie in the movie theater. It Which was, movie? It was like a prequel to The Exorcist that came out like 10 years ago. It was terrible. Just awful. And I walked out. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, there's no way I'm watching this. But, yeah, the Jobs movie. I just, Kutcher just didn't do it for me. Tom Cruise has a movie where he's in... Like the future, and he's like the Vanilla Sky. No, 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 no. This was more recent than that. I, it was just on cable like a less than a year ago. Jack Reacher. No, after that, I don't remember. You have to look on his IMDb. Who cares, we buddy? Don't have so the point is, like, he had some movie. I watched it for ten minutes. I'm like, yo, Tommy, I love you, bro, but I'm out. Just can't do it. You got to catch my attention quick. If not, it's not happening. But another Steve Jobs movie. Maybe this one will actually be better. So what? So. All right, thanks to everyone who took the time to call in. Those just tuned in. Thanks to our guests as well, Teddy, Cannell, Izzy, and everyone who stopped by, Goodman as well. Uh, thanks to Drew, John, and Stanzik, and Rich too. I'll be back tomorrow for Uncle Ronaldo. It's the Hurt. You coward.